written around 375 BC, The Republic is a treatise by the Greek philosopher Plato. Its protagonist, Socrates, discusses the essence of morality with several other Greeks, including Plato's brothers. Whether living a moral life is its own reward is the major question they ask themselves. Do humans profit from morality on an inherent level? They investigate the characteristics of the perfect society throughout the process. They examine the rules this society would follow, the types of art that would be accepted, and the individuals in charge. Lastly, they talk about how this ideal may deteriorate and how it could represent the deterioration of the human mind. After returning from a feast, Socrates engages in a morality debate in chapters 1 and 2. He disavows the two widely held beliefs that morality is about aiding friends and about repaying debts. The idea that morality serves as a safeguard to prevent downtrodden or weak individuals from defying authority is then met with resistance by Socrates. This sets up a more general conversation that will structure the remainder of the work. Specifically, does morality lead to enjoyment regardless of incentives and penalties from outside sources? To tackle this difficulty, Socrates investigates morality in a fictitious ideal human society in chapters 3 and 4. In doing so, he talks about the beginnings of this group. These are based on the need for economic division of labor and argue for the existence of a distinct military caste known as guardians. Socrates then goes on to describe the guardians' ideal schooling. They need to hear only tales that uphold virtue and constructive social behavior, not ones that encourage immorality or discord. The lives and duties of the guardians are covered in chapters 5 and 6. These would have no property ownership and be austere and communal. There would be two classes within the guardians themselves, auxiliary and rulers. A noble lie or myth would be propagated to keep people in the designated classes. According to Socrates, the way these groups are divided in society is analogous to the three parts of the human mind. The workers and farmers' physical desires are represented by the laborers, the auxiliary's passion, and the ruler's reason. The position of women and sexual interactions in this society is set out in chapters 7 and 8. If a woman has the necessary qualities, she should be permitted to hold the role of guardian, and there should be strict regulations on sex. At certain designated periods, only the finest men and women would be permitted to have children. Socrates questions the process of creating this perfect constitution. He implies that installing it would need philosopher kings. These are the folks who value intelligence and are more drawn to something's fundamental qualities than its outward manifestations. The nature and significance of goodness are examined in chapters 9 and 10. Rejecting the notion that pleasure is the basis of virtue, Socrates uses the allegory of the cave to try to make his point of view clear. The brightness outside the cave is what makes it good. Yet most people are stuck inside in the dark, only able to see shadows on the cave wall. The notion that goodness lives in the ideal, understandable realm of abstract concepts rather than the perceptible world of tangible things is metaphorically represented by this. It also describes the philosophy of the monarch's education which is centered on teaching them to think about ideal forms rather than tangible objects. 11 and 12 examine how the ideal society might deteriorate into less effective systems of governance. These are democracy, rule by the people, oligarchy or plutocracy, rule by the wealthy, timarchy, rule based on status and martial ideals, and dictatorship. Different personality types also correlate with these forms of governance. Timarchy is characterized by passion, plutocracy by avarice, democracy by a lack of self-control, and dictatorship by debauchery. 
Similarly, it is believed that the degree of satisfaction these systems and kinds experience correlates with the hierarchy of how moral they are. The least moral and least joyful system is dictatorship. Socrates addresses the function of poetry in the ideal society in chapters 13 and 14. He contends that poetry should be outlawed because, as a representational art form, it is divorced from reality and so contradicts reason. Finally, he looks at the practical benefits of morality. He argues that good people will be rewarded and immoral people punished in the hereafter, supporting the existence of an eternal soul. An in-depth explanation of the afterlife and how each of us is reborn is provided at the book's conclusion. If you have any suggestion of which book I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.